1065 is on the road here at Lenovo Tech World in Las Vegas. It's been a great show so far. Wow, watching YY and the bevy of partners kick it off in the Sphere was uh, amazing. AI pretty much from pocket to cloud. Yeah, the Sphere was awesome. Uh, it's We're not there anymore, so we, can't, we can't do the whole, oh, we're in the Sphere. But you know what? The event goes on, Pat, and the technology will continue to roll and the opportunities will continue yeah. to scale. And if I walked away with any one thing yesterday, it was, man, this is a big opportunity. And, and you know me, I'm the guy that the opportunity is already really big, but right. it was just so exciting to hear from so many partners at so many levels that AI in your pocket, AI in the cloud and everywhere in between, it's moving quick. It really is. And it's amazing. Just five years ago, people were talking about the slow or no growth in data center infrastructure. And, and now here we are, infrastructure is cool and yes. growing at these exponential rates, complexity is going up and co-designing, particularly uh, across uh, CSPs uh, and you know, the new, new term of uh, neo clouds is becoming more and more important uh, given, again, the complexity, but also uh, the requirements for time uh, to, to token. And, I'd like to introduce uh, Connor uh, and Benoit with Lenovo to chat about this. Welcome, guys. Uh, welcome. Good guys. to see you again. Gosh, I saw you last night yep. at a party. <laughs> uh, we, we, we cranked out a, a video at the Sphere, but it's great to see you. Good to be back. Yeah, good to see you. And Benoit, uh, nice to have you on. First time, right? First time. All right. Well, we'll ask you the hard, the last. We'll ask you the hard questions. Yeah. <laughs> You get the hard questions. Well, let's start off and talk a little bit. And, you know, I'd like to hear from both of you on this one. But cloud service providers, right, the term, it's evolving very quickly. I think a couple of years ago, we would have thought maybe of three, four names when you say cloud service providers. Now there's, I think there's actually hundreds. Mm -hmm. um, and there always were more, but it was always very centric to a few big hyperscalers. Yeah. Neo clouds have come up. AI has created this whole new wave. Some of them are, uh, you know, Bitcoin mine miners that became cloud. Some of them built just from brand new. I mean, talk a little bit about how that whole business is evolving and how it's changing the uh, AI ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, it's they've had a lot of different names over the years. You know, I've, I'm partial to hyperscalers, but to me, it's always yeah. just been about anybody that needs infrastructure mm -hmm. at scale, right? They're not talking about onesies, twosies. It's rack scale. It's how many racks, how many thousands of racks. And you're right, that's used to be a handful. Yeah, uh, and now it is. It is in the hundreds. Um, their kind of approach to the world's changed over time. Um, at the tippy top end of it, it's a lot of collaborative, custom design work. Sometimes uh, they're doing design work. Sometimes we're doing design work. Sometimes it's uh, you know both of us doing it together. Uh, but it's a very interesting model in that they often have the same design teams that that we've got in terms of uh, designing these servers and these racks and these architectures. Yeah, I mean, I kind of think of cloud as not a destination. People kind of think of cloud as hyperscalers. This is public cloud as a destination. Right? I mean, cloud is kind of an, an architecture. And it's an architecture that sort of evolved over time. Um, it started out with you know workloads that sort are of migrating to the cloud as a one-way destination. And those workloads sort of changed, became cloud native. Uh, and then it sort of, you know, sort of morphed back in terms of running on-prem as well as a cloud we call the hybrid cloud. I think that, so that sort of model applies well to AI as well. It's where they're well suited. So I don't like to think of my customers as a complete paradigm of anywhere from hyperscalers all the way to neo cloud to even enterprise customers sort of running their own private cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, cloud is, is, is an operating model, not a, necessarily a destination. Isn't that what we used to say <laughs> years ago? But, but I think, uh, it is being extended with even uh, cloud providers uh, managing on-prem infrastructure. And Sovereign Cloud has really driven a, a huge need for that. Yeah. And it, as much as the hyperscalers protested uh, of that, it's just, right. it's what customers want, yeah. right? It, it, it's nice to, to say, oh, I only need one CSP, but the typical enterprise uh, has, has three plus. And I always like to say, you know, if you're honing in uh, on one of them, you're one acquisition away right. from adding another cloud partner, right? right? So, yeah, the reality has uh, set in here. The other phenomenon, too, is, is global scale, right? You do have some very large uh, companies that, that want to operate on a global scale. And how has that shifted 
uh, the expectations uh, uh, for you guys? And, and maybe we'll start off with you, Connor. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So that's one of the strengths that Lenovo brings to this market in that we have a massive global manufacturing footprint. And as you look at things like sovereign clouds or uh, various other kind of forcing functions in terms of being having to build kind of in region, yeah. close to where, where uh, the gear needs to be deployed. And there's other factors that helps. Like, like you mentioned time to first token earlier. Like time to first token is a lot faster if you're manufacturing close to these massive data centers that get built. So it's all about how quick you can get these things up. And so being able to be super flexible about where we uh, build these things uh, helps us deploy them faster to where our customers are located. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd say from a customer perspective, or you you kind of think of it as, you know, I talked about it yesterday a little bit on sort of the evolution from PC to the cloud era to the AI era. And in the AI era, you kind of think of, oh, training equals public cloud, inference is edge. Um, but I think it's sort of a continuum of where these workloads are deployed. I mean, you want that training to be sort of more uh, domain specific, you want to be, you want to leverage these big models that's built on the public internet, but you also want it to run on your own infrastructure with your own data. So that's driving a lot of sovereign requirements of where the training is done, um, and also requirements of where we build our infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah, Makes sense. One one interesting thing to note again on a, on a strength of Lenovo's is that I think we're uniquely positioned to do the, the, the highest end of hyperscale deployments. Um, but we're also have the teams and the services uh, and all, you know, all the logistics support to deploy similar you know, rack scale architectures into the enterprise. Yeah, I mean, Jensen getting up on stage and I don't know, co-announcing the solution here uh, at Tech World, I think put a big uh, exclamation point to uh, him and YY. Yeah, for sure. But I think you're hearing a lot about that. I mean, you saw the announcement of the MI440X. I mean, they're trying to build infrastructure that's yeah. designed for the enterprise. NVIDIA has already been down that path. You guys are picking and choosing, you know, which partners to build. You, you have the ODM capabilities to build very specific infrastructure for these customers. And I think that's really important because what is going to happen is you are going to land hybrid. You're, it just, you know, hybrid cloud versus hybrid AI have some differences, but really there's a lot of similarities in it, right? They're going to say, look, these are the workloads we want to run on-prem. This is the data we don't want to have leave prime, or this is the data that because of governance, compliance, sovereignty, we have to run local. Uh, and we want to control our destiny there. Maybe it's cost related, maybe it's governance related, but they want to do that. So, but this also creates a, a big challenge because you know, you, you're basically constantly navigating between cost, speed, uh, you know, outcome, all these different things. And the cost and economics probably are going to be a lot better to build on prem for a lot of cases than run, especially if you're doing high volume work on tons of token generation. Um, but speed is like, hey, it takes a while to stand this stuff up. You know, the hyperscale is it's all running already. Like, mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges, the trade offs in this kind of AI hybrid cloud era for enterprises? Because building their own might economically make sense, but saying, hey, we're going to take six months or a year when we could, you know, go to AWS or Google today and start doing stuff like. How are they balancing Yeah, that? I mean, the, the, like the time to light up the workloads, one thing, but I think what's very interesting about uh, AI hardware specifically is that it's evolved very quickly. Um, its power density has gone up way faster than general purpose compute or, or, or storage. And so there's unique challenges in that, excuse me. <clears throat> there's unique challenges in that in it's not all enterprises are gonna have the facilities, right? They might mm -hmm. have data centers uh, or corporate campus uh, data rooms maybe doesn't have the power and cooling to run these things anymore, but maybe there are things they can run. Maybe they've got some inference stuff they can do uh, on-prem. Training is off uh, in the cloud. Um, the key is flexibility, right? Don't get locked into any kind of one model. Have the flexibility, the portability, the, you know, containerization, lots of different technologies to help move these things around. And, and uh, to me, that's the key. It's that flexibility of deployment model. Yeah, I'd say our, our goal at Lenovo is to sort of meet the customer where they're at. Right? If they're a hyperscaler customer, they want to have their own design, we can help them there with the ODM model. If it's uh, an enterprise customer and want something off the shelf, uh, we can help there too. And if it's somewhere in the middle, you know, there are plenty of customers there today. Yeah, a question, I don't know if this is an architecture question, but it, it gets back to the classic, um, how, you, how, how, how do CSPs layer on AI services between the cloud and on-prem, you know, we've seen, uh, you know, GDC, 
uh, from Google. Uh, we've seen, you know, AWS come out with their flavor. Uh, I was always wondering, like, just didn't, they just didn't seem serious uh, until now, particularly with uh, with sovereign AI. But but how structurally uh, does that work if they want to do it in both? How do they manage and not have this just utter chaos of supporting, you know, completely two different environments. Yeah, I've seen like, I mean, there's, like, I've seen a couple of different models in terms of, there was kind of an, an earlier era of this where the CSPs were like, okay, you can have stuff on-prem, but it's gonna be our hardware, our racks. And it's basically yeah. just the same version, but on, uh, of what they deploy, but on the customer's uh, premises. That's not quite as flexible, I think, is, is what customers need and want. And so you've seen more uh, effort around data movement and actually having you know, connectors between clouds. And there's a whole ecosystem of people that have popped up as this kind of glue ecosystem in terms of you know, helping implement that portability. So I think that's a, a, is a good thing. Yeah, uh, I think my, my tweet was health, health did freeze over yeah. uh, when we saw the network sharing between you know, the, the two hyperscalers that yeah. never did it before, yeah. right? And, and it was great because it really, um, that's, what, that's what enterprises want. Yeah. They don't want these gigantic ingress and egress charges or, or, or things like that. So I think, and then, you know, the, the sovereign uh, AI announcements just in a year, right? right? We've had more in a year than I saw in the previous five and the implementations are actually good and you can figure them out, right? I mean, they make sense. Yeah. Yeah, part of this, you know, I think, I don't know if you saw some of the announcements in the last couple of days on actually using not just one model, but the benefit of multiple models in your answers. Yes. Right? And the only way you could do that is, you know, sort of solves the multi-cloud problem in some ways. Uh, you're doing it at the model level, taking the benefit of all five, and then you sort of have your own version that runs on-prem based on your data. Yeah, the abstraction of AI is incredibly experiential. And most enterprises in terms of users and why they're doing IT and why they're doing AI has nothing to do with any of what we're talking about. I mean that with no cynicism. I mean, they don't really care where the workload uh, performs. You know, the reason that, you know, we've sort of seen the AI device thing, you know, have kind of a varying level of success in the market. Now, people, most people will be on AI devices, no mm -hmm. question about that. Mm -hmm. But is that people don't care if the cloud serves them up the token or the prem serves them up the token. Now, the CIO cares. Uh, the CFO cares, but like the average user, it's experiential and meaning. So when you're building models, mixtures of experts, and you're doing it on different infrastructure, you're saying, look, I want to make sure that my data across my proprietary data, the open data, the models that we're using, it's able to easily aggregate with low latency, depending on what it is. If it's a vehicle that needs like no latency, if it's a language thing, it's like, oh, if it takes a second or two to generate a token, I'm okay with that. Like, and so all these things in the end, it comes down to like, are we driving productivity? The measure of this era will be about productivity driven, tokens and productivity. That's where we're gonna go. So if you guys can enable that, enable enterprises to do it, do it securely, do it sovereign, do it in compliance, do it governed, you will be successful. I wanna thank you both very much for joining us here on the 6.5. Uh, let's have you back again soon. Not you. You've been on twice in a, in a couple of days. But, but only, <laughs> All right. Awesome. Need a third time. <laughs> third time's a charm. Thank you. Happy to be back much. anytime. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having thank us. Very much. And thank you everybody for being part of this 6.5 on the road coverage. We are here at Lenovo Tech World 26 in Las Vegas. It's been a great week. Check out all of our other coverage. The day at the sphere. Check out the rest of our coverage here today. Stick with us for more. We'll see you all soon.